Greetings there! Today I will be going through um, one of my latest projects, which is reverse engineering this light controller, which controls the light in my room. And um, basically, it's a pretty nice little controller. It has five different switches on the remote uh, high, medium, low, off for the fan, and a light switch which can toggle the light. And um, so here's the circuit board. Uh, nothing too special here. You have an 18-pin chip that I couldn't find any data sheets of, which is partially why I'm reverse engineering this, because it might lead me to find out what the chip does. Uh, really nothing too special. Capacitors, diodes, resistors, uh, an LED. And then right here, we have four wonderful switches, labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4, which uh, are pretty important here. And it's powered by a 9 volt battery. And as you can see, you have the five switches there. Um, that's where they all hook up, and there's all the wiring and whatnot. And uh, basically, the, the point of this entire project is, first of all, it's a relatively simple circuit that would be fun to reverse engineer, and I don't have the data sheet for that, so, well, it's not like I can just look it up and probably logically make assumptions of what the circuit does. So, what I did is I hooked my oscilloscope up and I've been collecting data and trying to figure out what exactly is being emitted to the light and I found out that it's uh, 12 bits here and I'll, I'll show you the actual data and meanings later in the video here. Um, so here on my whiteboard I drew out the schematics of the circuit, probably with a few errors because, well, Oh, sorry, I wouldn't be able to draw it out perfectly on my first shot. I double-checked it, but that doesn't mean much. Uh, so, there, of course, the circuit and uh, the four switches. And uh, all goes around, you have the other switches, and basically what you saw on the schematic itself, and some capacitors that I haven't gotten around to labeling. And, uh, yeah. So, basically, um, here's one of the waveforms that I captured, and this is when I'm sending the off uh, signal, so when I'm hitting the off button, and what I found out is that these four bits here correspond directly to the little four switch thingy, whatever you want to call that, and I'm assuming, since I haven't seen this bit change at all, I'm assuming that that is always one, and that's a start bit. Um, but here you go, you have the 1010 from the uh, switches, which I have set at 1010, because hopefully that will be the easiest for analysis. And then following that, we have uh, some more bits. Right here, we have a high bit, which I'll show you in a second what that means. And here we go, we have another low bit. And so... What, what I've been figuring out is it seems that that one bit, when it's sending this packet, if that's what you want to call it, right here, having this bit set means you're uh, sending the off, and it doesn't seem like any of these bits actually go at the same time, ever. Um, so here I'll scroll through. There's low. Notice how it skips that bit. For what reason? I shall find out later. And here's medium. And here's high. And here's turning on the light. So, um, I'll go through that. Here's lights, off, low, medium, high. As you can see, that bit there and that bit there, neither of them changed so far in what I've done. And the uh, first bit has always remained one. So I'm assuming that that's some sort of a start bit or something for timing or who knows why it's there but but it's there and uh so pretty much it's pretty obvious that we have one bit that's always one four bits that represent the four switches uh one bit that's unused one for high medium low skip one that we don't know yet and then we have uh the off and the light so that's what I have so far. I'm going to get around to trying to document this a little bit better. Uh, just because I feel that it would be a fun little project to document 
rightly and uh, maybe make a professional looking reverse engineering documentation, you know, plug the schematic into the computer so it, you know, is relatively readable, uh, put it all on my website, maybe upload it to Hackaday or something and who knows, maybe someone would stumble across it and be like, oh, I have that light controller and now I'm going to be able to, you know, hack my room to bits and make a party room and whatnot. So, well, uh, this video might be helpful to someone, but it, it's not a completely, uh, complete documentation. But it's, it, I'm just trying to introduce the new project I'm working on. So, oh, and also my lovely Rigol DS1052E that I got about a few weeks ago. And, uh, it's the 50 megahertz and 1 gig sample per second. But, of course, I've hacked it like most owners of this oscilloscope to work at 100 megahertz, which is absolutely wonderful. So for 400 bucks, I have a 100 megahertz scope, which is a steal. And I've, I love the product uh, so far. Uh, it's great. Uh, it's my first oscilloscope, so I'm probably not going to have anything to compare it to, of course. And uh, the software that I've been using to interface it, this ultrascope, is pretty nice. Um, I mean, like if I, were, I can connect up here to my oscilloscope because it's plugged in, I can go to virtual panel and basically I can control every little thing on my oscilloscope here, which there's really no use for it, but it, it's just pretty cool to, uh, I don't know, relatively remotely control my oscilloscope. So, so far, I mean, getting all these pictures on my computer, it's been pretty simple, nice high resolution, and, uh, yeah, I really like the scope. So if, if you have 400 bucks laying around, you don't have a scope yet, I highly recommend getting the scope. Um, it's really nice, you know, because you can hack it to 100 megahertz, and, uh, if you go to the EEV blog forms, you can find ways to do that via USB or serial. Um, I use the USB method, and actually my oscilloscope came with the latest firmware. Um, I think it's four point, I can't remember, I'm not gonna shout something off if I'm completely wrong. Right now it's locked up because I'm connected here, so I'll disconnect. Um, but if I go here, I can get my system info, oh, so it comes with 2.04 SP1, and the, the problem is with the 2.04 firmware is that, well, if you're running 2.04, you can't upgrade or downgrade your scope. So, like, I couldn't go back to the 50 megahertz version. So, which, who cares? But, um, basically, some guys on the EV blog forums found a way that you could downgrade your uh, software version and apply the patch, then upgrade again, and then it will stay locked as I'm using the latest firmware. And, well... Yeah, as you can tell, it's, uh, not the same model number. Well, that was kind of fun. A little bit nerve-wracking, though, hoping, hoping that none of the firmware was bad. I didn't want to brick my few-day-old scope. But it all worked. It's, uh, it's pretty nice. The guy who has all the firmware had MD5 sums, so if you summed all your stuff, you were pretty safe that, uh, you wouldn't have any corruption or failures unless you unplugged your scope or something. But that would just be stupid, so you wouldn't do that, would you? No, you wouldn't. Anyways, I'm kind of rambling, so this is introducing my new project, and uh, kind of reviewing the oscilloscope, which I haven't really touched in this video, so it's not much of a review, but you get the gist of things, so... Yeah, it's a good scope. I recommend it. And so does... Dave Jones from EV Blog. And, well, that means it's good, right? Anyways, um, I'm off. Uh, I sh you should see documentation later on below the video, somewhere down here. Or maybe over here, or up there, or maybe over there. Who knows where YouTube will put the comments slash description next. And who really cares? Because YouTube hasn't really gone down in quality, unlike Facebook. I'm ranting. Well, almost at 10 minutes, and so I'm just going to go. Bye.